Good afternoon. My name is Darya Akkainak, and I'm an oceanographer. I became an oceanographer because I didn't live the spring of 2007. Springtime in Washington, D.C. is refreshing like a glass of lemonade. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, the temperature is just perfect. And then the cherry trees blossom, and for just a few weeks, the river looks like it's decorated with a necklace made out of popcorn. But in the spring of 2007, I didn't get to see any of that because I was locked inside a brick building. Three other people were locked in there with me because we were a team of consultants on a deadline and the building was the corporate headquarters of one of the largest financial institutions in the US. We were working to get, catch this deadline, but it felt like the deadline was running away from us. And our boss, who was managing, had asked us, how long do you think it's going to take you guys to finish this project? We'd said, at least six months. Okay, he said. Turned around to our customer and said, we'll have it delivered to you in two months. So to live up to that promise, we started working from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day. Days stretched into weeks, and weeks melted into months. Eventually, we started burning out, but it was expected that we could keep up the schedule because we were young, and for our age, we were being paid a glamorous salary. Essentially, we were a bunch of kids who had just finished college, and the only thing in common about all of us was that we had no commitments. We didn't have spouses, we didn't have diapers to change, we didn't have litter boxes to clean. We were totally blinded by the amount of money we were making, and making money was sweet, but what was even sweeter was traveling on someone else's dime. All our flights, hotel rooms, steak dinners, taxis, car rentals were being paid for by our customer, but we got to keep all the airline miles and the hotel points and the gas rewards. So in the spring of 2007, I was making a ton of money. I had a million airline miles, but I was very unhappy. The building we worked in must have looked as lifeless as its architectural model must have looked. On the outside, they had cleared the lush forest that was natural, and it was replaced with football field-like grass. On the inside, dark blue carpets hid the dirt from our shoes and gray walls separated cubicles and phone conversations. But no matter how thick, the blinds and the frosted glass failed to block sunlight from coming in. And every ray of light that managed to come into our office was crushing me because on the outside, it was springtime, but I wasn't allowed to live it. So in the spring of 2007, I asked myself, what is a job I can do that I will look forward to showing up to every morning? Is it possible to work and feel alive at the same time? And then I answered my question. I wanted nature to be a part of my everyday life and not something I experienced on vacation two weeks a year. So the next year, stock market crashed, I quit my job, and I started a PhD in oceanography. This was nine years ago. In the last nine years, my income and savings have completely dropped. <laughs> But there have been many days when showing up to work meant that I woke up on a research ship in the middle of the ocean with no land in sight in any direction. It meant that I saw seals nursing their young. It meant that I looked into the eyes of penguins who had come right up to me to check out what I was doing on their piece of floating ice. I deployed instruments off of boats in Dutch Harbor, Alaska during high seas. And if I hadn't quit my job, that experience could have been something 
that I only maybe imagined watching the deadliest catch from my couch <laughs> in Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> now, I'm based out of a research station in the Red Sea, and my morning commute is a bike ride plus a short swim. Every morning when I swim, I check on the friends I've made in the last year, a particular stonefish, particular octopus, and a particular moray eel. So I don't have a million airline miles anymore, but I'm happy because I love showing up to work every morning. The great poet Pablo Neruda said this about love. You can cut all the flowers, but you cannot stop spring from coming. And it turns out it applies to careers as well. Thank you.